If we have a flowing fluid through a pipe with the cross-sectional area A and a flow speed V, the volume rate of flow, the volume of flow per unit time is A times V. Because in a unit of time, in one second, the fluid would flow through a distance V. And the volume in this cylinder would be the height times the base. So it will be the V times A. So this is the volume rate of flow, which means this is the volume of flow per unit time. Then we talked about the, the equation of continuity, which comes from the mass conservation. For example, if we have a fluid that flows through a pipe with changing cross-sectional area, the speed of flow is V1 in this section, and the speed of flow is V2 through this section of the pipe. According to the mass conservation, that means that the, every second or in a unit of time, the mass flowing in would equal to the mass flowing out. And uh, the mass is uh, the density times the volume. So this is the density times the volume coming in, which is uh, A1 times V1. If we look at the one second, remember A times V is the volume rate of flow. And this will be the rho times the a times V. Notice that this capital V is the volume, this lowercase v is the speed. If the fluid is incompressible, that means the density stays the same. So we can cancel the density over here, and that's, uh, that gives us uh, v A1 V1 equals to A2 V2, and that's the equation of continuity we use in this course. This tells us that uh, if the cross-sectional area is smaller, the flow speed must be faster. Bernoulli's principle says that for an ideal fluid without viscosity, an increase in the flow speed of the fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in the pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. And the Bernoulli's equation says that the P plus one half rho V squared plus rho GY is a constant. And this is derived from the conservation of energy. That's why this looks so much like one half MV squared and this one looks like MGY. So if we look at this equation, suppose the Y1 and Y2 are the same. Um, there's no height difference. Then the P plus one half rho V squared would be the same on the two sides. And that means uh, the faster the speed, the lower the pressure. Just as described by the Bernoulli's principle. We can use the Bernoulli's equation for problems like this. For example, let's say the pressure for this faucet comes from this pressure head that's a certain height, y1. When we say the pressure head has a certain height, that means we are providing the pressure using a water tower that is up high. Okay, so we can say this is one, that is two. At one, the pressure is atmospheric pressure. So this P1 is atmospheric pressure. At one, because this water tower is really big, so when the water is on, the water level in the water tower is going to go down very slowly. That means uh, this is almost zero, just because uh, A1 V1 equals to A2 V2, the, uh, the equation of continuity. If A1 is very big, that means V1 is very slow. And then, of course, uh, Y1 would be up high. And then over here, if the faucet is on, that means the water over here is also touching the atmosphere. So P2 is also atmospheric pressure. And then, of course, uh, V2 is not zero. We're looking for V2. And then we have Y2 that's down low, so this is zero. That means uh, we can cancel the atmospheric pressure and just set these two equal and we'll be able to find the speed of flow if we know the height of the pressure head. We can also use Bernoulli's equation to find the force produced by pressure difference on a roof on a windy day. 
or the lift force on airplane wings. Let's say this windy day has a, a speed of wind V1. And that's the wind speed above the roof. Inside the house, the wind speed will be zero because the air is calm in there. For the airplane wings, because uh, on the top over here it's curved like that, so the speed of flow is uh, faster. So V1 is uh, faster than V2. For both cases, we can say above the roof and below the roof, the height difference is not too much. So we can say Y1 is about the same as Y2. Same here, above and below the wings, the height difference is not too much. So we can say Y1 and Y2, they are about the same. And that means uh, we can plug in the speed above and below. And we will get this equals to that. We will not be able to find P1. We will not be able to find P2 because we only have one equation with two unknowns. However, we can find P2 minus P1. We can find the pressure difference above and below the roof or above and below the wings. And this is what we need because the force, the lift force on the airplane or the lift force on the roof comes from the pressure difference above and below. So this is the force equals to pressure times the area. It will be the pressure difference times the, airplane, the airplane's wing area or the roof area. And that gives us the force from the pressure difference. And the P2 minus P1 is 1 half rho V1 squared minus 1 half rho V2 squared. Because it's airflow, that means this density here is the density of the air. So we have the pressure difference and we can find the force if the area is given. We can use a water tower, a height, to provide the water pressure. We can also use a pump to provide the pressure to send water up high. Let's say we want to provide the pressure to send water up to Y2 that high so the water can come out of the faucet at a speed V2. And we know that the diameter um, or the cross-sectional area of the faucet opening is A2 and the diameter of the or the area, cross-sectional area of the pipe over here at the pump and say we want to find how, uh, how fast the water flows over here and we want to know how much gauge pressure we have to provide to the pump. In this case, we have two unknowns, the speed over here and the pressure over here. That means we need two equations. So we can use the Bernoulli's equation for flowing fluid. We can also use the a1v1 equals to a2v2, the equation of continuity. We have two equations, so we can solve for two unknowns. So we can do a1v1 equals to a2v2, and let's see, if this is 1, that means p1 would be the gauge pressure we're looking for, plus the atmospheric pressure, just because the real pressure is gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure, or the absolute pressure is gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. And then over here, we have a flow speed of V1. And then, of course, down here, there's no height. And up there, the pressure because uh, the faucet is on, the water is touching the atmosphere. So P2 would be the atmospheric pressure. And uh, the flow speed is V2. The height, of course, would just be Y2. So these two equations can give us uh, the two unknowns.